Are you looking for some extra private pilot study material? You're in the right place because today on free pilot training, we're going to be studying Class C airspace. Here's a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. And as you can see, this lesson is jam-packed full of information. I'm even going to touch on radio communications, which is often one of the hardest parts of becoming a private pilot. So let's get started by taking a quick look at some of the characteristics of Class Charlie airspace. The first thing you'll notice about Class Charlie is that it's similar to Class Bravo in that it's also shaped like an upside down wedding cake. Because of this, pilots can fly underneath one of those shelves and still stay out of the Class C airspace. Let's see how this would look on a VFR sectional. You can identify Class Charlie airspace by these solid magenta rings surrounding the airfield. Every airfield with Class Charlie airspace is a little different in some way, but typically you'll see a five mile ring surrounding the airfield that starts at the surface and goes up to 4,000 feet AGL. Then most of the time, that outer ring is a 10 mile radius from the airfield. The bottom of this airspace usually starts at 1,200 AGL and goes up to 4,000 AGL. You can find out the exact altitude of this airspace by taking a look at the VFR sectional. Just like in Class B airspace, we have these numbers that look like they're improper fractions. These are the altitudes where our airspace starts and where it ends. In this case, the Class C starts at 2,300 MSL and goes up to 4,700 MSL. Then on this inner ring, you can see that the top's also 4,700 MSL, but this one starts at the surface. One thing to keep in mind about Class Charlie is that these outer rings can be segmented. That just means the bottom of the airspace could start at a different altitude. Time for a quick quiz. I'm flying inside this outer ring at 2,000 feet MSL. Am I in the Class C airspace yet? The answer is no. The Class C starts at 2,300 here. I think you've got that down now. Let's look at some of the rules you need to know. First, we need to establish two-way radio communications with ATC prior to entry. Then, we need to maintain those communications while within the airspace. Unlike Class Bravo, we only need to establish two-way radio communications. We don't have to be clear to go into Class Charlie airspace. Let's take a look at how we can do that by talking about the radio communications. Remember this format? Let's use it again. Who they are, who you are, where you are, and what you want. First things first, you'll notice on the VFR sectional that they want you to contact the approach controllers within 20 nautical miles of the airfield. While this is not required, this is to help you out. ATC needs time to find you on radar, and while you don't have to be cleared to enter Class Charlie airspace, they can tell you to avoid Class Charlie until they find you on radar. And anytime we get instruction from ATC, we need to comply with those instructions. So do yourself a favor and contact them once you get within 20 miles. Okay, so I'm flying my Cessna 152 into Tulsa International Airport. I'm 20 nautical miles to the northwest at 3,500 MSL. I just listened to the ATIS and they're playing Information Tango. Let's call them up real quick. Tulsa Approach, Cessna 6789 X-Ray, 20 nautical miles to the northwest, 3,500 with Tango. Request straight in to runway 18 left. Now remember, the first thing we need to go into this airspace is to establish two-way radio communications. So we need to hear our full call sign back. If you hear aircraft calling and then something else, you haven't established two-way radio communications yet. In this case, we can't go into the Class Charlie airspace yet. But as long as they read back our full call sign, we can go ahead and proceed into the Class Charlie airspace. Unless, of course, they specifically tell us not to enter yet. Even if you hear Cessna 6789 X-ray standby, you've still established two-way radio communications, and they aren't specifically telling you to avoid Class Charlie airspace, so you've met the requirements and now you can come in. Okay, so let's say they call this back. Cessna 6789 X-ray, Tulsa Approach, Descend and Maintain 2500, Squawk 0223. Now we've heard our full call sign so we can go in, now there's a couple things that we need to do. We need to descend and maintain 2,500 and squawk 0223. Now just repeat the numbers and add your call sign to the end so they know you heard correctly. Descend and maintain 2,500, squawk 0223, Cessna 6789, X-ray. Then, once they find you on radar, you might hear something like this. Cessna 6789, X-ray, radar contact, fly heading 180. 
make straight in for runway 18 right. Now it's always really important to pay attention to what ATC says because if you remember, I asked for 18 left, but they gave me 18 right. Now I could ask if they'll allow me to change to 18 left, but it's really important to land on the runway they tell you to. For today, 18 right's better anyway, so I'll just call them back. Heading 180, make straight in for runway 18 right, Cessna 6789 X ray. Then, once approach is ready to hand you off to tower, you'll hear Cessna 6789 X ray, contact tower now 118.7. Just repeat the frequency and your call sign. That's all they need to hear. 118.7, Cessna 6789 X ray. Once we switch frequencies, let's give them a quick call. Tulsa Tower, Cessna 6789 X-Ray on a five mile straight in for runway 18 right. Today's an easy day. You hear Cessna 6789 X-Ray, clear to land runway 18 right. When it comes to landing clearances, they need to hear every bit of that information back. So today I'm gonna to respond by saying, clear to land runway 18 right, Cessna 6789 X-Ray. Now let's take a look at the VFR weather minimums for Class Charlie airspace. This is the worst weather you can have and still be legal to fly VFR. First is three statute miles visibility. That means we need to be able to see for three miles. Next, we need to be able to stay away from the clouds. We need to stay at least 500 feet below the clouds, 2,000 feet from the sides, and 1,000 feet above. A really good memory aid for this is 3152 or three 152s as in Cessna 152s. If you can remember that, you'll have the numbers memorized. You'll just have to remember which ones go where. The last thing we'll talk about today is the equipment required to fly into Class C airspace. First is a working two-way radio. Remember, we need two-way radio communications to go into Class C airspace, so that makes sense. Next, we need a working transponder with Mode C. That just means it reports our altitude to air traffic control. When it comes to transponders, they all have to have Mode C capability in order to go into Class Charlie. But in addition to that, they also need to be capable of 4096, which is Mode 3A or Mode S. You don't need to know what these do, you just need to know that your transponder needs to be capable of Mode C and one of these. One thing to keep in mind is that if we stay below the Class C shelf, we don't need a transponder. But if we fly over the top of the Class C airspace, we do need a transponder. By the way, huge thank you to Bold Method for letting me use some of their graphics. If you haven't been to their website, be sure and go check them out. They've got lots of different free study material to help clarify some of these subjects. I'll throw a link in the description if you want to check that out. The last piece of equipment we need to operate in Class Charlie is ADSB. Now, while you really don't need to know what it stands for, you do need to know that you need ADSB out. This piece of equipment tells ATC your position through satellite instead of radar. In Class Charlie airspace, anywhere you need a transponder, you also need ADSB. Now, as someone pointed out in my last video, there are some exceptions to these ADSB requirements. If you think you qualify, be sure to check Part 91 225. You want to be 100% certain that you meet these exceptions before you go into Class Charlie without ADSB, because in most situations, it is required. Hey, before you get out of here today, make sure your thumb lands on top of that like button for me. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on more free pilot training.